going on it before but what was the progression of materials that you used to get up to this point where you're using latex and all sorts of adhesives and fabric, stuff yeah. yeah fabric textile and latex is the core um, all right plastered and chicken wire <laughs> paper mache was a big one paper uh, but like the mochi kind and I made things that really I wish I had some examples of things I made they look great but uh, if I made a headdress out of that stuff, it, would, it was he way heavy, and the sweat from my head would make it start to get yeah. a little soft, you know? Start to crinkle because it's Crin still mm -hmm. paper. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, aluminum foil and hot glue. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of spackle. That's <laughs> Gobs of spackle that I'd sand down. And it's amazing what you can do with that, Just apparently. That aluminum foil, hot glue, up. and spackle. Sometimes I'd buy, I'd buy hot glue by the bag like this, <laughs> and I'd have like blistery burnt oh fingers by the end of it. It's all this like webby stuff gets over you constantly yeah. trying to clean it up. And, and then when I discovered latex, it was just sort of accidental. No one showed me any of this. How did you stumble upon that? I was because I knew the liquid latex and I you know I'm like what if I made something about you know I thought instead of body paint I had some pieces out of just latex. Yeah they, they sell it at you know like is adult it, stores as a as a toy, you know, yeah. and you can paint it on, you can paint like a bra or whatever on yourself, and it, it's said on the back of the right. bottle, can be applied to fabric. But don't make a rubberized, you know, rubberize your clothing and have rubber clothing. Like, hmm, I've never seen anyone do that. So I tried it out, and that was it. That's like, the earth moved yet again. <laughs> <laughs> and then... I started experimenting with it, and you know that's the one grade of latex that I long since abandoned. Yeah. But it, there were certain properties that it had, even the low grade stuff that was really good. It's a certain. It, but then making it yeah. durable and permanent, like because the rubber degrades after a while, so he. So now I use a grade that's materials. that's vulcanized, and then you seal Lots it, layers. you protect it to make sure. Actually, latex is very durable if it's if it's uh, cared for properly. I know I, I saw this documentary on something like latex latex masks, and he had ones from 100 years ago. They're still fine. They were just kept well. Wow. Whereas latex is sort of this like you know throwaway material, but it really isn't. Maybe once it was before they learned how to vulcanize it. Yeah. But uh, in Ho in Hollywood, they use other materials often, but. And latex is sort of for making guts and little you know, scabs and sores on your face and stuff. But, you know, um, I use it a different way, and it's the best. I've tried other materials, and I keep coming back to, to latex. It's just the best. And then we used to teach classes, and we're actually going to start oh, wow. doing that again. We have the teaching, there's a, a high school in <laughs> Shelby, which is like an hour going towards Charlotte from here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to work with the theater department there, and they're going to be doing some steampunk wow. um, armbands. Some dark stuff. Oh, wow. We'll see how it goes. We haven't taught for three years, more than three years now. And we used to teach littler kids. We kind of, as, as our son was growing up, we would teach the kids that were in his age group. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't want to teach adults because we didn't want them to steal our ideas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Well, in L.A., especially. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I'm not... 
I'm more inclined to teach adults now, but... Uh, yeah, you never know. Yeah. But there, I did know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> teach me! You can see we have a lot of different genres of that you cover. subcultures that yeah. are interested in what we do. Well, I mean, you can really make it into anything. That's mm -hmm. why it's... Mm -hmm. And I still have a list this long of things I want to try. I just haven't gotten to it yet. It's, oh man, it, the possibilities are amazing. That's because Lynette has a studio down the hall, and she came in here and she's watching. Was, oh my God, the possibilities are really, really endless. But I want to do what you're doing. You know? Dusty. How Dusty. many, how many pieces do you think you guys have done in the past? Oh man, while? I, I forget. It's so funny. I'm always amazed when I start saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, we made that." It just, it just keeps rolling out, you know. Oh, you've made probably four or five hundred pieces by now. Maybe. Yeah, probably by now, you, you know. little things. Yeah, I like mean. The big significant pieces, maybe like 30. <laughs> so, I realized there's a, a you know, there's a, a, a need for this. It yeah. looks so dangerous and badass on stage, <laughs> and even up close. And it won't hurt anybody actually if you whack them in the head with it. And they're <laughs> able to do like flips through the air and you and know stay put. and then the helmets can fly off and get kicked across stage and they're I'm not gonna break and there's like these things hold up really great <laughs> they get scraped up a little bit and i'd repair them but then uh, that's why then after i figured out how to make them really strong where they didn't even get scraped up that's when i started selling retail wow. for people you know it's different stage at the same time the all the mainframe programming was getting offshore to India. So we're kind of looking like, well, you can go back to school and learn all these other kinds of programs that and people them. are wanting, which are probably going to be defunct in a year and a half anyway. And or, spend a bunch of money on it. Right. Or we can maybe just go with this thing that you really want to do. Yeah. And see And then cut our lifestyle back, 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 back. Yeah. Actually. We did. <laughs> so we did. Live the art, live life in art. studio. We got a housemate to help with the money and started trying to you know, build a website. Yeah. That was in 2000, end of 2005. And some, and you know, my favorite client, you know, are cosplay people, they're people that, they're art, artists themselves. And uh, another, another set of clientele is belly dancers. And we've got, we got some in a show in New York City, this really high level belly dancer at Neon. Uh, What's that? What's World the, Dance New York. World Dance New York. She produces all these great um, how-to kind of belly dance. Yeah. You know, tribal fusion, different styles. Mm -hmm. You know, and and, um, and then she's a performer herself. She does really great. So mm -hmm. we got a bunch yeah. of stuff in in, uh, in that and that. So, but often the kinds of artists that are are commissioning me to do things are not, you know, they're not into making money. They're into expressing themselves. And <laughs> No. So I try to keep my stuff as affordable as I can. I'm, uh, it's often, you know, the expense is an issue. It's not like, oh, I a million dollars for costumes. <laughs> not yet. That would be but, nice. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I have this <laughs> ambition that it's going to be a, some sci-fi movie that okay, doesn't have a full budget. You know, like they a, want it to look... But they don't have $10 million for costumes, but they just have $1 million. Just give me $1 million. <laughs> give me $10 million, I'll hire all my unemployed friends. <laughs> Pay him a really good way and we'll, we'll blow him away. <laughs> so is organic armor your like main income then, or most of the year it is? Yeah. Uh, we have we piece together. You know the winter is slow, yeah. so we both have part-time jobs during the winter. Just to keep up with yeah, but higher yeah. bills than normal. We the we year. moving to Asheville from LA. Part of the reason for that was because the cost of living is so much less here. Oh, Even sure. though people in North Carolina would say it's high in Asheville compared to LA, it's like a quarter of what we were paying there, so it still feels low. <laughs> no. and, uh, and you know, we do what we can. We, we live on a pretty slim budget so that we can have more time to do the things that we want to do. Especially when you live as an artist and you realize you don't need that much. You can, your life is so full so rich and full of people and you know create creative creativity you scheme and conspire to have fun and play with people do you think a lot of creativity has like been taken out of everyday life you gotta make money man and that really <laughs> <laughs> that changes the game you know where you know you learn how to do with less and less and less and 
less you can you need, the more free you are. You know, it's, you un, you know, free up your energies to do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. But, How do you think doing organic armor has changed you personally? Ah, <laughs> kind of a big question. As a profession, I mean, it's it's changing me. It's changing me. And, um, uh, I have to say, it's about you know, I mean, you have to, and I'm, le I'm learning how, I'm learning to, how to be in a creative process for a longer period of time, mm -hmm. and managing that. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm extremely successful <laughs> yet with doing that, but that's the demands of doing it, of doing this, because some things I just can't do in a certain headspace, and you put that aside and do something I can do, and kind of juggling things around, so. And it's, you know, um, it's not always fun because you got deadlines and you're kind of sweating over things that, you know, you're doing, right, you're, you have the, the time factor. Has, it's good, but deadlines are good though, right? Yeah. I'm not opposed to deadlines because otherwise, you know, I could take, you know, five years to do that. <laughs> no, do one it's not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> not done yet. Can't um, have um, oh. Let's see. How many conventions do you guys go to in a year? You know, we're, um, we need to do more, we kind of like homebodies and stuff, so almost we have to, to get ourselves unentrenched in our little space, it takes a lot. Uh, we do conventions, we, I think last year we did like three, only three, but we would need to start doing more. Um, uh, those are the kinds of shows that we have to do, because it's our kind of people. You know, it's not just a craft show, it has to be people with lots of imagination, creativity, those are the people that no explanations need, you know. You have a general knowledge, probably, even with a couple of them, you can get a pretty good grasp of what cons are. Um. Yeah, we've met some, like, uh, other costume makers, like, one leather guy makes a, a big dragon thing, it's amazing, just handcrafted stuff, not professional, just People do it for the people doing it for the love of it, and that's uh, you know it gets you back into your original inspiration for it. You know, Cause it it's not as often as I'd like that I, I don't make things for myself very much. You know. Yeah. It's pretty awesome, but time consuming. <laughs> <laughs>